What is up everyone? It's Conrad back with another video and I'm here to tell you today that the future is here. So recently OpenAI released their Codex module and it's a real game changer for programmers and those who don't know how to code. So for those of you who aren't aware with OpenAI's work, they also did GPT-3 where basically they downloaded a ton of text, put it through a neural network, and the neural network became so powerful and so complex that it was able to predict long strings of text given just a very basic input. So for instance, you could act like you were having an interview with someone and it would autocomplete what a certain person would say in that interview. You could summarize text just by saying summarize. Uh, it's just super, super powerful. There are tons of demo videos on uh, OpenAI's GPT-3. But anyways, today we are here to talk about Codex. And Codex works almost exactly the same to GPT-3 except for it's with code. So they downloaded a bunch of public code on the internet, ran some models on it, and it became so powerful because of the size of the neural network and the size of the data set that by simply inputting text, it can convert that text into code. So just to show you what I'm talking about here, because we're talking about coding without actually coding, we're gonna create a game and we're gonna do it all using English words. So here I have the Codex JavaScript Sandbox provided to me from the OpenAI API. And basically, we're gonna provide instructions here in English. That's gonna be converted into code here. And then it's going to be displayed here. Uh, the JavaScript will be displayed here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a very simple game uh, where basically we're gonna have an animal pop up on a screen. I'm gonna choose a giraffe. And we're gonna to try to click that animal before it disappears and jumps to a random part of the screen. And every time we manage to click it in time, there'll be a counter that goes up and there will also be a timer. So with that being said, let's get started. So first I'm gonna look up giraffe cartoon uh, so we can get a sprite for our game. Tools, uh, let's make sure it's transparent. So we'll go like that, all right. I like this giraffe, so we'll copy the image address and we'll say make an image with this source. And then we'll put in the source. And there you go, the giraffe has appeared on the screen and you can see here it has auto-completed our comment with uh, putting the giraffe on the screen as an image. Now, this giraffe is too big for our game, so I'll just say make it smaller. And you see it's seen the context and so it makes the giraffe smaller. But honestly, I think this is a little too small, so I'll say make it a little bigger. All right, I think that's a better size. And then we'll also say, make its position absolute. Okay, next what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the counter. And in order to make the counter, I'll say make text that increases by plus one each time the image is clicked. Okay, we'll try it. And you see we have this number and it increases by one each time we click on our giraffe. Now what we're gonna do is I'll say, move this text to the bottom. So that way we can see it better. Hopefully this works. Okay, that didn't work, but that's okay because we're going to have the giraffe move randomly because uh, we'll have to click it. So we'll say, make the image jump to a random position on the screen every one point, we'll say 1.5 seconds. I wanna make this game easy so that I don't embarrass myself trying to play it in front of you guys. Okay, 
So you can see the giraffe jumps around. We click on it, the counter goes up. Now next thing we need is we need a timer. So I'll say make a timer at the bottom of the page. So try that. Just like that we have the timer which shows how long we've been playing and we have the counter which shows how many times we've clicked on the giraffe. And now obviously uh, this game maybe doesn't look like exactly how we want it to but we can change it very very easily. So for instance for the text for the timer what we could do is we could add text that says timer colon and then the actual timer. Uh, and we can do the same thing for the counter as well. But yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this example. We've created a game using solely English. Uh, I think there's a lot of potential for OpenAI Codex. I think it's going to change the way that we write code. But yeah, thank you guys so much. Uh, if you have any questions about this video, leave them down below. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you guys so much for making it to the end of this video. As always, if you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that like button. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about what we did in this video, please leave them down below. Now, if I could have just one more minute of your time, I would like to tell you about a service that I've been using for over a year now called Scribd. Now, just as a side note, Scribd did not sponsor me to make this video. I just wanted to tell you about it. Put simply, Scribd is a lot like Audible, except for instead of being $15 a month, it's only nine, and instead of only having two audiobooks per month, you get an unlimited access to a plethora of audiobooks, ebooks, documents, and even sheet music and magazines. So for me, this was obviously a no brainer. And right now, if you use the link in the description, you get 60 days free of Scribd, and I get one month if you sign up using my link. So that's why Scribd didn't officially sponsor this video. I'm just telling you about it so that I can get some free months and I can continue learning and you can also continue learning with your 60 day free trial. So thank you guys so much for making it to the end of this video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.